Hey guys, Harry here with Zero's Geckos, vlog number eight. If you are new with us, you've never seen these vlogs or the Gecko Pod. I'm the host of the Gecko Pod. I started the Gecko Pod not quite two years ago, but almost two years ago. I host that podcast with AJ from AJD Reptiles. He's the OG breeder. And I started that podcast with the intention of having AJ, an old school breeder that is well known and also is very experienced with his care and pairings and kind of understanding the lay of the land. And for me as a new breeder, I didn't know much, right? So initially I had the idea that, okay, I'm a new breeder. I'm going to ask AJ a lot of questions and I'm going to learn. And in the process, everybody else can learn as well. And so by and large, I feel like we've accomplished that goal and we're still doing that. You know, I'm still learning as we have morph chats, as we interview other breeders, as we interview people from the industry, like Robin from Redline Shippings that we did last week. So it's been good doing the gecko pod. It's been a fun time. And now I have these vlogs because I wanted to approach and even simplify it even further, hopefully, for new breeders. So you'll be able to see how I think and do things and approach things, how I'm building out my own business and the community that I've surrounded myself with. And it's not that I'm the go-to guy. Um, I say this in every vlog, but it is a source for you guys to learn. So hopefully you guys can learn a little bit from how I do things. And you know, if you see things that you think are interesting that might work in your business, then feel free to just to take it and um, use it and try to put your own spin on it. Because everything that we're doing, everything that I'm doing, it's not new. You know, there are aspects of creativity that I like to employ and use for, you know, this business and how I'm building things. But a lot of the a lot of these ideas aren't new, right? We're just all trying to somewhat copy each other, but do it in a way that's better and more tailored to kind of the audience that we have, the customer base that we've already built. So for me, I'm not too worried if other people start doing vlogs. I know some people started working on vlogs after I started, and you know I'm sure there's people that have done it before I have too. It's it's not a new thing. Um, podcasts as well. The podcast is not a new thing. People can try doing podcasts. People have done it before. And it's it's just one of those things where just do it, do your best, and people will be drawn to it or not, right? And you can adjust and do different things. And I think that's what makes trying different things fun because it's not a one shoe fits all type of deal. The formula that I'm employing doesn't mean it's necessarily going to work for you. Right. It can work, the general structures and the general ideas, but you have to make it unique to yourself. This just past week, I launched my website, uh, www.zerosgeckos.com. Do people use www anymore? Like, we don't even need to say that. Zerosgeckos.com. I feel like such an old person saying that. Zerosgeckos.com. And I wanted to make it very simple. And so my buddy Alex has been helping me kind of build out and make a website that is tailored to me and kind of how I want to see things done. So I'm thankful for Alex for helping me out with that. So this is my website. So the homepage is just this. It's not long. It's very simple. Um, I have available animals that you can click on and I have a featured animal that you can click on. I'll talk about this in a second, but these are the two main things of what you're going to click when it comes to buying animals. And then down here is very simply a vlog for new breeders. That's this vlog that I'm doing right now. You can go here. You can go to my channel, subscribe, watch videos. I think you could watch it from here too. You hey guys, this is... Yeah, you can watch it from here. You can also go to the Gecko Pod. So from here, you can watch the videos. You can also obviously click on the channel itself and go there, subscribe get notifications, you could watch past videos, things like that. And then down here is a live Instagram strip of anytime I post animals or post a post, then it populates down here. And then you can enter your email to sign up for my email list. Um, I'm going to try to eventually get to my email list. For now, I wanted to launch the website. And so that was step one. But yes, eventually I do want to build out an email list so that people can be notified directly in their email of things that I have for sale, things that are going on, any sort of community events that are going on. If I get in the rhythm, maybe just an email once a week, once every other week, something like that.
just to keep things updated for you guys, whether it's the vlogs, whether it's the podcast, whether I have available animals, new featured animals, things like that. So I do want to do that and craft it in a way where you can open up an email and just see it very neatly of what's going on. So right now this homepage is very simple. The main thing about this web page is that I want it to be a place that people go to and keep coming back to. I mean, that sounds very basic and simple. I feel like since we have the podcast, the Gecko Pod, I have these vlogs, it is not only a hub to kind of learn and grow in knowledge, but also there's going to be some available animals you can purchase from me. And also when it comes to this featured tab here, I'll talk about these specifics in a second, but the featured aspect, the featured Gecko, is something I want to build out and build a lot of momentum for because I don't want to just have my animals up here, right? So I do want to be able to kind of curate different people's animals and ask if they'd like to put their animal up for sale and then they can take uh, the profits of whatever they sell. Um, I And the idea of doing that is simply to make it a community place where we kind of gather, we see people's stuff, you know, and I can help promote and showcase people's animals. And I think it's just a fun thing, right? This featured auction is very simple. We can make, we can run it for two, three days. The thing about auction is that the prices aren't always going to be what you want. So this animal right here that I have right now that you see playing, that's something I listed for 250 bucks. Um, I would like that amount, but in all honesty, I don't think I'm going to get that, at least not right now. Instead, I put it up to list. I believe that it's a much higher value than what it's currently bid at. So starting bid $10, no reserve, bid in $10 increments, flat rate of $60 for shipping. I posted it last night. So it's only been less than 24 hours, and there has been some decent action here. So if we scroll down, I posted it, and immediately Emma from Spotted Lily Exotics bid first she bid ten dollars i posted this to my ig story there's no other place that i've been promoting this besides instagram and obviously now with this vlog if i'm able to post up this vlog you'll see it on youtube as well but it's not on youtube yet as of now obviously and i just put it up put it up on my ig story and i got some bids already 10 20 30 atx 30 40 from kathy Amanda and Patrick did 50, Ashley at Crypto did 60. So you can see that it's been being bid up. It's cool. It's kind of cool to see some of this action going. And so if I can kind of build out this section of my website and make it build enough momentum so people will know to check the website often, then I would love to kind of build up this platform and then feature other people's animals. I think that would be an awesome way to kind of get the community involved where can, this can be a hub of an auction where it's not overwhelming. So Morph Market has the auction feature on their website, which is fine. I sold an animal on auction there. But I think doing this allows a bit more control in the sense that since AJ and I have already built this platform of the Gecko Pod, and since I'm slowly building out this vlog platform and my branding and whatnot. I want to be able to use whatever platform I have to kind of help other breeders as well. I think that's kind of a, a cool thing that I would love to do so that it's not just about me and lifting myself up, but, but I would love everyone to have a chance to kind of be out there, to put themselves out there. And if I can help a little bit, I'm happy to do it. And obviously I talked about people reaching out for sponsorships and, and promoting their stuff on the get-go pod and I've declined on there because I want to keep the gecko pod very simple without that stuff. I think there are other ways to promote breeders other than just promoting items and animals and things like that. So I want to do things a little bit better, a little bit more streamlined. This coloring, this tricoloring, this yellow comes from um, charcoal because charcoal, charcoal's dad or charcoal's mom, fantastic, was a tricolor. Absinthe, I don't have lineage on, but absinthe is a pretty white animal, which is kind of cool. A lot of these Harley markings are almost like triple X-ish from charcoal. Has some decent white patterning going on. Head structure could be a little bit better. I think this is just me needing to incubate a little bit longer, which I'm doing with an actual incubator that keeps 
um, a level temp of 72. But this animal is pretty cool. I think it's worth 250. I'm putting things up knowing that I might lose out on it. And um, that's okay. I just want people to enjoy the animal and also to be able to start building momentum for this featured auction on my website. So here's the start of it. This is the start of me launching my website and hopefully building out community and hopefully integrating and weaving community aspects of the hobby into the website as well so people can come and connect. So the GeckoPod Discord is does do that. I've heard several people have made friends off of the Discord, off of connecting with each other from the Discord and the GeckoPod, which I love hearing. Um, I want to continue to do that even further. And I want to do that through this website where there's more functionalities to be had. We're able to sell a little bit better. I'm not sure how I'm going to build community further into my website, but I do want something. I'm still brainstorming some stuff that I want to kind of pilot and test run where there can be another page. For now, I'm building out this featured portion so that hopefully it can benefit other breeders in the near future. So if you haven't seen this yet, go to this website. It's zerosgeckos.com slash featured, or just go to the homepage and click the featured tab here, and it'll bring you here. And then you can bid up over here. It looks like Kathy bid 140, but on by replying on another person's bid. So let me say, hey, Kathy, make sure you submit a new, new, a new comment so it brings to the top. Anyway, I think this is a pretty cool feature. Hopefully it does well. Thank you guys for supporting it and building it out and uh, visiting it and bidding on it. Also, give me feedback on how you think I can make this section better, at least the first iteration of this. So far, I've received feedback that people should be notified if possible if they're outbid. So I'm not sure how we're going to build that in. I'll have to talk to Alex about that. But that would be that's actually a pretty good feature that would be good to have. Like eBay, right? When you bid on eBay and you get outbid, then you get an email saying that you're outbid. So far, I'm encouraged by what's going on here. Go check this site out. Go bid on this animal. Actually, let me see if I can pull this animal. So he's pretty clean, a clean tricolor. It goes wider when he fires up. But he fires up 16 gram boy. A couple more things on my website. Podcast tab. Just a little blurb over the podcast. And then you have a little strip here where you can see the most recent episodes. And then my blog. And my vlog. Vlog is you guys right here. That's us talking right now. The vlog I like because we can just talk so candidly and easily. So it's easy for me to do. The blog, the blog definitely takes more thoughts and process of writing things out. And so I'll write things out. Uh, I think it's good to have both. So I'll populate both. But the vlogs for sure I'm going to do more frequently. The blogs I'll get to as you know time permits. And then here's the contact. And that's it. Very simple. Merch is my shirts. Breeders are the breeders. Here are the male breeders. Here are the female breeders. It took me a while to upload all these pictures or just even take them. Um, I actually have more animals than this. And I didn't take pictures of all of them. I didn't pair every single one of these, by the way. I have these available to pair as breeders. I may sell some this year, this season, or I may pair it at a later time. I'll probably also put them in alphabetical order so that when people have to look up animals from a pairing, they want to look up lineage, then they can quickly go here and find their male, their dad, and the, the mom of their offspring. Availability, I just have to sit down and grind it out. I have to pull out animals, take some pictures. I'll probably take pictures in the light box right over there. So that's my site. Talking about building out the platform, building out your base, building out your community. I do think that that is the best thing that you need to do, that you should do while you know just starting. I see a few people have started their Instagram pages and you know they have a few animals posted up. Um, but just realize that getting to a place of you know, selling things and being more successful and integrated in the community, there's no real shortcut to that. I mean, there are better ways to go about it, but there's no real shortcut to it. It's just patience, making connections. Some people come in with the mindset 
that they're going to expedite and make a ton of money and sell things right away and become a big business. And I would say that most people aren't able to pull that off. And what I mean is that when I came into the hobby, I also had this mindset that I wanted to expedite, that I want to build out a business. And so when I came in, I had a pet in 2021, a crested gecko um, near the end of 2021. I got a couple more and I really liked the geckos. I started looking things up. I started looking up how to breed them. I started looking up different morphs and it took me quite a while to kind of learn the language and be comfortable and familiar with everything that's going on. So when I started to breed, I came in thinking that, okay, I'm going to build a business. Like I want to build it so that it's a legitimate side hustle. And if it's more than that, that's awesome. So currently I'm in the mindset that I want to build out a business. I'm not just going to do it purely as a hobby. I want to build something bigger than that. And I'm not saying I'm going to be as big as AJ or Pangea or other people that have thousands of breeders and hundreds and hundreds of breeders. I do want to pair animals. I want to, do want to expand this room. I do want to have another building or, you know, like a larger room that I can build out, out in the backyard so I can expand even further and double in size. I do plan on doing that, hopefully, but I'm not going to be a massive machine. I just want to be able to produce animals at a, at a higher level to build out the business. But talking about the business versus the hobby aspect, once I shifted my mindset into it being more than a hobby, that's when I was okay with increasing my initial investment into purchasing animals. Like I said in the last vlog, I, do, I don't think that you need to put in a ton of money in order to breed and grow. But I do think that if you want to grow as a business quicker, you do need to have more animals. That's just a simple thing to understand. You want to produce more animals so that you can sell more animals. Obviously, there should be some sort of number cap that you're aiming for and you're thinking of. And with that number, you can plan ahead and say, I need. 20 breeders this season, ready to breed, ready to go, or 50 breeders or 100 breeders. It's important to kind of understand those numbers and talk to people and see how much animals they can produce. But before jumping into doing it on such a large scale, I do think as new breeders, we need to familiarize ourselves with the lay of the land. The lay of the land, meaning the community, breeding practices, what you can get canceled for and what you won't get canceled for how to properly care for your animals, actually loving your animals. Don't look at it from strictly a pure business standpoint and see these animals as just widgets or items. They're more than that. These are animals that you should be loving and taking care of and um, respecting and doing your best to see them thrive and flourish. So don't come in with the mindset that you're just gonna make a lot of money. But also don't come in with the mindset that it's not about the money. It is about the money. If you sell animals, if you go to shows, and you're making money, you're doing it for the money. And that's fine. We're all in the same boat together on that. But it's possible to fuse your passion with business and go at it. So first, be able to love your animals. Keep pets for a little while. Keep pets for a few months and see if you like it. Even if you keep half a dozen crested geckos or whatever reptile animal you have, keep them for a few months. And if you feel like you want to breed them and you feel like you can make a side hustle out of it, then go towards that route. It's fine. The first thing you need to have is love for the animals. If you don't have that, don't breed. Like don't even go into business with this thing. You have to love the animals. That's obviously first and foremost. Once you kind of embody that love for the animals that you have, then you can sit down and really think how much you should invest into the hobby. Is that number 5K? Is number 20K? Is that number 50K? Is that more? When you are in the mindset of building out a business, you're going to want to spend more initial capital. And But before you do that, you should also develop not just a love for the hobby, a love for the animals, you should develop an eye for quality. This aspect is actually harder to look for than you think. Because a lot of people will say, hey, like I have some nice animals. Or you say, oh, this is a beautiful animal. And you look at it and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's like a low tier, almost a wholesale animal, right? And again, if you want to breed that stuff, 
then that's fine and that's okay. But you just have to understand that you're breeding low tier animals. So you're going to get low tier pricing. If you want to improve your stock, then you need to be willing to spend more on higher quality animals. And in order to do so, you have to develop the eye, constantly look at pictures, find all the key players in the gecko hobby, whether it's here in the US, whether it's in Korea, and just look at their animals constantly. Follow them on Instagram and put your notifications on anytime they post things. There are so many nice and beautiful geckos out from both US breeders and Korean breeders. And you begin to develop an eye after the months pass and you're just looking at animals nonstop. You'll begin to see that your animals may or may not be up to par. And if that's the case, you need to start thinking of how to upgrade your stock. I see this time and time again that new breeders will show us their animals, how much they paid for it. And I'm like, oh, they're just going through it. There's not necessarily a shortcut for that process of developing an eye and understanding of the market trends and how things are priced and what things are fetching at shows versus online versus private DMs. It's important to figure all of that stuff out. So what you can do is you go to Morph Market, go to Morph Market, look up all these different prices and ask people. So what I like is when people, when new breeders will DM me and be like, hey, I'm thinking of buying this animal for this project. What do you think of the animal? What do you think of the price? And I appreciate that because I'll tell them my thoughts. And a lot of times things are overpriced. So if you go to Morph Market, you can see everything that's for sale. So if you look here, there's almost, there's 5,500 geckos listed, crested geckos. I remember when there was less than 2,000. The market is now saturated, but it's still not as close to ball pythons. Ball pythons is like 20K or something. But here we are with 5,500 5, animals that have been sold yet. But it's a good pool and a good sample, sample size to see what things are selling for. Go on Morph Market, look at things and see uh, the various quality of things and also the pricing. So since everything has names, I'm not going to tell you what sucks and what doesn't. The idea here is just that to tell you to go on Morph Market and just browse, like spend a lot of time just looking at animals, why things are more expensive than why things are cheaper. You can look at stuff like this and be like, wow, what the heck? Why is this animal $3,500? And you can be like, okay, it's a proven female. So females are a little bit pricier. It's a high white, but is it really worth $3,500? I don't know. That seems kind of pricey. Let me go ask my friends. DM your friends, DM people you trust. You'd be like, hey, this is a kind of cool animal for my high white projects. Is it worth $3,500? They're going to be like, no, it's not worth $3,500. You go, okay, pass. Stuff like that, right? It's that simple. Um, you can also ask them why it's $3,500. And then they might give you a backstory of, the various breeders and um, their pricing history, things like that. You can see all the different Harleys, all the different pinstripes. This is also, Morph Market is also another great way to kind of figure out the different morphs. Actually, a good amount of times people will tag their stuff incorrectly in terms of the morphs. It's still, uh, you'll, you'll begin to at least get an idea of what's what, you know, if you have no idea what's what. So I would say for all new breeders, everybody should be on Morph Market not necessarily to buy, but just to look at examples. This is a great place to understand pricing and morphs. This is also a good way for you to look at different breeders. Their names are right here. And you can be like, okay, this breeder charges a lot more than other breeders. Why is that? Then you could look them up. You can look up their IG. You can look at their stock. You can look at their history. You can look at their interactions with other breeders within the comments. You can ask people about them. And this is, and you just constantly do this over and over again. And then after several weeks, after several months, you're going to begin to understand more and more what you should stay away from and what is worth going for. Sometimes you'll be offended of some of these prices of like, why is this animal so much for this crappy animal? Nothing, I'm not pointing at anything here in particular, but I'm just saying in general, why are some of these so expensive? Asking questions is a good thing because you'll get answers, hopefully helpful answers, and that will help you begin to set your gauge of pricing in your mind. So figuring out the quality versus the pricing 
is huge. That is a huge skill to develop. Having an eye for what's what, having an eye for quality, whether it's the head structure, whether it's the patterning, whether it's the coloration, um, whether it's the quality of the white versus the cream, the quality of a cappuccino or frappuccino or exantic, the quality of a dark, all of that stuff you can learn at least initially from Morph Market. Another cool feature of Morph Market is you can go to Morphopedia and then go to whatever animal you want to see. But you can go to Crested Geckos and then you can look at all the different traits. Oftentimes the traits are categorized incorrectly when you're on a particular listing. But so that's just something to be aware of. But you can take a look at how they have a lot of various traits and morphs. Some of these things in this list are more lines rather than traits but we'll just leave it at that. I won't comment any further, but something cool. You can play around with Morph Market. I'm sure you, all of you guys are doing this already, but if you're like brand spanking new, this is, this is good advice for you guys to kind of learn and a good resource for you. Okay, another good resource, and I've heard most of you guys have heard us talk about this a lot, is going to Lil Monster's website. So everybody knows about little monsters and the foundation genetics whether or not you agree with them is something different there are a lot of people that disagree with what anthony and jess have to say i respect them because they do the work they put in the work to kind of build it out so that it's easier for people to at least have a handle of what's what sometimes you might not agree with how things are said or certain things that are done but you can at least begin to get a handle on the different genetics and morphs and traits. So you go here, lmreptiles.com, go to foundation genetics overview, you can read all this stuff. Oh, hey, gecko pods on here. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> cool. So Anthony and Jess have their episodes on here, which is nice. I didn't even know they had that. And then they have their foundation genetics book. You can learn all the terminology, terminology that a lot of people use in the hobby. Again, people can disagree with it, but you have to respect that they did a lot of work here. As you can see, a lot of us have learned a lot of things from Anthony and Jess's work. You can see that base color morphs, there's only black, red, and yellow. And obviously, it's a mixture of those as we kind of cross different things together. But the main base morphs are black, red, and yellow. Then you can see pattern and color and morphs, Xanthix, cappuccinos, empty backs, blah, blah, blah. Soft scale, tangerines, all these things, white wall, all these different traits that you can learn about. So you click it, it brings you all the way down. The website can be revamped, right, Anthony? <laughs> but at least the information is here. So you can read about the snowflake, the white spot. We talked about this on the gecko pod as well. And then there are picture examples, how they kind of combine with different morphs and how they display. And yeah, it's just another resource that you can kind of comb through and read it's more of a reference rather than a read through so anytime you have questions you're wondering about an animal or a trait that somebody's talking about and you're not sure what the heck they're talking about just go here go to foundation genetics and click on the trait and then you can read all about it and learn about it so there's so much to do as a new breeder there's a lot of homework to be done there's multiple facets of what you need to build and grow in you need to grow in not just your knowledge in terms of the morphs and the care and the breeding practices and actually doing all the hands-on work, but you also need to learn about the community. The community can either help you or it can hurt you. And it's unfortunate that there is some toxicity within the community. There's no workaround for that. Try to avoid the toxicity. Try to avoid engaging in toxic behavior. I know it's hard to help sometimes. Some of us are a little bit louder than others and we feel that urge to speak up. Just don't take the bait. Show people through the work that you're doing, not through just being loud and obnoxious. Do the work, make good animals, build out the community. People will see you as either being a negative person or a positive person. It doesn't mean we can't critique and have an opinion on stuff, but how you present yourself is important people will see you as positive or negative if i do keep a check on myself because i do have strong opinions but i try not to share too much publicly instead i talk i want to talk more about principles and 
the ideas of positivity rather than specifically calling out people by their name and trying to bury their business. That is not what I'm about at all. I, I think that's a little bit too far. It's a lot of learning moments for all of us. Anytime we've made mistakes, I'm not about that cancel culture. It's not my thing. It doesn't mean I don't care. I do care, but I think there are different ways to go about resolution and making change and helping people to grow in the hobby. Straight up just bashing people is not necessarily my cup of tea. That's not something I want to involve myself with. Really think that if we were to build a community, we can do it in a way where people are drawn to it, where people, where even shady people will be will be drawn to kind of the positivity of the culture and then hopefully be able to change, right? And maybe that's wishful thinking on my part, but I would love to believe that that's true. So ideally, everybody gets along and learns and grows and villains and a-holes learn to be better people and they make a change. And so at least that's my hope for people. I, I want to see best for people. I, I truly want people to thrive and flourish. Even if you are a quote unquote bad person, a bad guy, you know, hopefully you don't stay there. Hopefully you grow and learn as a person, right? Even beyond the reptiles, we just want to see better humans in this world. So that's my goal is to help be more positive in a community that is full of negativity. So what am I talking about? Um, <laughs> starting a business, building a business, uh, get animals, have an initial stock. Make sure you have planned out your initial investment for your stock. And that's going to help you calculate what you can and can't get. Stick to that. In the meantime, as you kind of take your year, your one to two years to collect various breeders and various grow outs while you're doing that make sure you don't neglect this aspect of community make sure you stay involved make sure you reach out to people and talk to people it's a constant learning cycle in order to really flourish and thrive and so for me if you see kind of my stuff i'm not saying i'm the best by any means at all there are a lot of people doing things better than i am for me i love learning i love learning not just like book knowledge but i love learning people. I love learning about communities. I love learning about the animals. I love learning about business. And because of that, I'm constantly wanting to learn and grow and learn from different people. So I'll talk to a lot of people and ask them a lot of questions. That is the way that you're going to grow as quick as possible. But be humble. Like Don't talk as though you know more than leaders that are 10 years more experienced than you. Once you do that, and once you present yourself that way, then that arrogance is going to rub people the wrong way and they're not going to want to deal with you. They might be nice to you, but they're not going to want to bring you into their community on the next level. So humility is huge in the hobby. If you talk like you know and you're shaming everybody all the time, like I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want people like that in my circles. So from the very beginning when I started in the hobby, I already knew kind of things I valued, things I wanted to build out. I'm a people person and I kind of go off of vibes of who you are and how you come off. You know, if it's bad vibes, I'm going to be nice, but I'm going to, you know, keep my distance. I'm not going to involve myself with doing work with um, people. And so for me, I'm always looking at and talking to different breeders and feeling things out. And if people don't care about me, then I'm indifferent. You know, it's not, and I'm not seeking for affirmation from people. It's not what I'm saying. But what I want to do is I want to surround myself with the best people. I want to surround myself with those that are positive and encouraging. And we all have our flaws. And so people you see me working with and um, talking to and being friends with, they all have their flaws. I have my flaws. But by and large, I want to be in a working environment with people that are like minded and that hustle and that are humble and that benefit the community more than they take from the community. If you're asking for stuff before anybody sees you giving, then I think it'd be wise if you to switch up that mentality and switch up the mindset of what am I in this hobby for? Am I here to produce the best animals and provide the best quality and value towards people and the community? Or am I here just to take and grab? I view the hobby in this way. I see breeders take or give, and I align myself accordingly to those people. Again, people can change, people can grow, and so I'm 
not one to be mean to anybody. Hopefully not. If I mean to you, let me know. But yes, I absolutely think humility is an important trait to have. Patience and hustle. So these are things that, you know, seeing just people grind it out and not complaining and not being a baby about stuff, but working hard and being cool with people and being a part of the community and involved and giving to the community. I think those are things that draw me to people. In terms of business, there are a lot of successful people and they do a great job. They're doing their thing. But I know myself to know how I want to build things out. I'm two years in and I'm just starting to sell animals and I'm still building things out. And I still love it. I'm still enjoying it. So the idea of patience is huge. In the time it takes you to come into your third season to start second or third season where you can start selling stuff and making a little bit of money, use all that time to build community. Use all that time to build the base. Use all that time to build your platform. If you just ask for people to follow you, if you just ask to promote your stuff, like, no, like that's not the mentality. The mentality is what can I give to other people? How can I support other breeders? If you want to make connections, buy their stuff, support them in that way. If you see a breeder that, that aligns to kind of your values and goals and what, how you want to do things and operate, then support that person, right? Doesn't mean you buy crappy animals, like still get what you want. Find ways to support those people. Find ways to support those communities. There are givers and there are takers and there are in-betweeners. There needs to be a good balance of you giving more so than you taking. You can, of course, not listen to any of this advice and still be absolutely successful. That is 100% true. But where I'm speaking from is the people that I want to align myself with. Positivity will come and it will draw more people as we give more, as people see us as breeders that are approachable, that won't nitpick the rules, that won't nickel and dime you for every single cent of shipping, which has happened in the past for me. Uh, those are people that I don't want to work with. Because, so that's me. I mean, you can obviously set your own criteria, write down your criteria of the community you want to build, people you want to hang around, and uh, look for those people. You can absolutely still be nice and friendly and even good friends with a lot of people that are very different than you when it comes to working closely with somebody or a group of people be a little bit more vigilant in doing your homework and who you spend time with your group of people is going to elevate you and help you grow as a breeder again you can always join the discord you can listen to all the gecko pods and that's I feel like that's actually one very good way to kind of learn and grow quickly in the hobby. Just binge watch all the episodes to kind of get a feel for all these different breeders, learn a few tips here and there, but build your base, build your platform. You have time to market. It's a slow build. Okay, so here's me. I'm at almost 5,000 followers. I started posting in the beginning of 2022, I believe. So I had animals at the end of 2021 and I started posting soon after that. And I only have 156 posts. Most people like will post nonstop. Um, Brian, who is actually a good example here. Brian's a good example. Brian started just a little bit before me in terms of coming on the scene and having an IG, but he posts every single day, sometimes multiple, multiple times a day, 927 posts. He has 56k followers he has 56k followers which is pretty crazy but he posts a lot and he does very well with his post some of his posts went viral for me i'm not i'm not as loud and out there and so what i have is a lot smaller but i only have 156 posts right he has almost like eight times seven eight times more posts than i do um and also he has like 10 times, over 10 times the followers that I do. And yet I've gotten to this place and happily gotten to this place because I don't care as much about these numbers. I care more about a strong engagement with a smaller group of people than I do with a wider audience and lesser engagement. So does Brian have a lot more reach? Absolutely. He has more followers. He has more people engaged with his content. 
And he's actually very good at talking with people, being close to people and giving them advice. A lot of people message him and I think that's awesome. For me, I know my limits. Even though I like talking and engaging with people, I know my limits when it comes to social media, when it comes to time with my family. And so I built it out this way, slow. 156 posts. I don't even post every single day, but each one gets decent engagement, right? Um, within the 150 to uh, 200, 400, 500, it's kind of all over the place in terms of the likes. Um, this one had this one went bigger, a thousand. Ghost also went a thousand, and uh, you know with the reels, reels, the reels. I feel like there's decent engagement. You know, seven thousand, seven thousand views. 3,000, 2,000, 2,000, 4,000. This one has 16, 16,000 views. This one has 246,000 views. So some, some of your posts and reels will hit, some won't. This is over the span of three years. But it took three years to come to this point. So if you just started and you only have like 300 followers, like don't worry so much about the numbers. Like chasing numbers is going to kill you because you're going to start posting silly stuff and it's you're going to start posting stuff that kind of sucks and is not relevant it's going to be cringy so don't chase the numbers the numbers are helpful as one metric but it's not everything do your posts do them nicely and slowly begin to add things as you go right so these features i just started doing female breeders and male breeders in terms of the highlights I just started putting out vlogs. A lot of these things are pretty recent. You know, for Linktree, I just put this up. I just got my website up. I'm three years in now and I just have a website. So do you guys see? I'm trying to help you guys to understand that not everything needs to be done right away. I want you guys to see that it's a slow build. Keep chipping away at it. Keep working at it. Add things as you go. Don't be too hasty. I've seen some people that just started breeding and um, you know, all of a sudden they become a somewhat source of authority. Like that, don't do that. That's, that's uh, it rubs people the wrong way. I myself am kind of teetering on that line, but I also want to make sure that I'm not speaking as though I know everything, because I don't. All I'm simply doing is I'm presenting what I've done, and hopefully you can learn from that. Sometimes I can get feel like I get a little bit preachy, like, oh, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that, right? And like always, you don't have to take my advice. This is simply kind of my experience and kind of my advice, but it's not like I know it all. Um, it's not the only thing that works. You can do something completely different and still be way better off than I am. But I, I do want to share this because I want you guys to see kind of my process, my thought process. Whether or not it's right is something debatable, but it is kind of how I grew to where I'm at right now. The podcast, the vlogs, kind of the slow build out of, you know, taking pictures, trying to learn things properly, finally getting a website. And so you can look at it and be like, okay, Harry is like super slow, way slow. And that might be true. But again, what I've focused on in the past two years leading up to now, now that I'm starting to sell animals and selling animals more regularly, is the build out process of community. Build the base. Build your base people, connect with people. Like I can't emphasize that more, more than I already have, but I'm still going to keep saying it. Every vlog, I'm going to say it. The hobby is one of those things where you just have to enjoy. If you don't enjoy the animals, at the very least, you're going to flame out. But imagine enjoying your projects and your animals, but also loving the community, having friends that you can talk to every day about these animals and just joking around about and that is what's exciting. That's what keeps you going. You know, if you have a good group of friends in, within the community, you bounce ideas off each other, you help your businesses grow, you give each other tips and advice on how to care for the animals on the different pairings. And that stuff is invaluable. That I feel like as new breeders, do your best to try to find that community. Find your people and right? use the Gecko Pod Discord to connect and chat and make friends if you need to. And then from there, you know, you can branch off and start your own group chat and grow closer to each other. This vlog is about geckos, business, and community. And community is huge. Your geckos 
will get better, will improve if you have a good community. Your business will get better and improve if you have a good community. So in all this time that you're coming to this place where you sell regularly, that you're making cool things, continue to build a base, build your community, find your community. Find it in the gecko pod. You know, chat people up. Don't be scared or too shy to chat people up that you think would be um, good people to connect with, to kind of pick their brains. It's not like you have to be buddy buddies with every single person, but I think you can learn from almost everybody, even new breeders. I talked a lot. I rambled a lot. There's more stuff I wanted to talk about that I didn't get to, but hopefully the thrust and the gist of this vlog will kind of hopefully inspire you to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid. Put out content. Who cares what I say about not being an authority figure? Just put out content as best as you can. Don't come off cocky or arrogant, but come off humble and people will be drawn to you. I think if you present yourself in a posture of you're learning alongside people, then you're less likely to push people away. If you talk like you know, you're going to push people away, guaranteed, 100%. Not only are you going to push new breeders away, you're going to push old, experienced OG breeders away as well. And so don't talk like you know when you don't. So just be a little bit more mindful of how you talk. If you don't really know, but you just have a strong opinion, try to find ways to discuss those things, but in a way that's helpful towards others, that doesn't come off arrogant like you know it all. So this is something that I need to watch out for myself as well. Okay, I should go. I'm, I have a cold, so I've been in between cuts, blowing my nose, <laughs> talking kind of nasally. But before I go, let me show you some animals or an animal because animals are cool and we like to look at them. This is the last animal that I posted on my Instagram. And then this one, Chi Lin. Chi Lin is, I guess, this mystical creature in Chinese legend. And uh, when I took this picture outdoors, it was like slight, oh, slightly overcast in the shade and she wouldn't fire up. So she looks like this here. But here is how she is more fired up. She's yellow. Creamy white patterning in the bottom of her lats right there. This is a Petri kid from Gabby, more from Nagerie. I got this one actually from auction. And this one's pretty cool. I like this one a lot. This is one Brian told me to bid on. <laughs> it's like, bro, get this one. And I was like, oh, this one's cool. So I jumped in and I bought this one. This is Sheelin. I paired her to. Compared her to Lion. Lion is this guy over here. This guy. So hopefully that kind of builds in some of the, the white into their offspring. Slightly odd pairing, but I think um, I'm interested to see what turns out from these guys. Let me show you one more animal. This one is Koi. This one's a Falk York girl from Tara Lee. She's fired up there. She's fired down right here. In, my hand right now but she's still pretty when she fires up she gets that contrast she gets this dark contrast like this and she's super nice i love this love this girl so the trait i'm mainly going for is um the white patterning the splotchy white patterning i want to in integrate that into tigery stuff and i don't know exactly how that's going to come out so I paired both those girls to Lion. The trait I'm looking for mainly is that side white patterning. I'm honestly not sure how it's all going to turn out, but hopefully cool kids pop out of that. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Those are more experiment learning types of pairings that of things I'm trying to develop. So if this video is helpful for you, like and subscribe. Throw in comments below as you like. Go to my webpage that I just launched zerosgeckos.com go to the featured gecko bid on that auction animal if you have any questions things you want to talk about message me you can comment below i'll see you guys on the next one